One of the reasons sinusoids are so powerful in signal processing is because they can be used as building blocks to construct or analyze more complicated signals. And in order to do that effectively, we're going to need to understand how the parameters of the sinusoid, the amplitude, frequency, and phase, affect the sinusoid. So the objectives are to be able to graph sinusoids given the amplitude, frequency, and phase, and then to be able to determine the amplitude, frequency, and phase of a sinusoid given its graph. So here we have our sinusoid, and we have the amplitude A, the frequency F, which we're looking at in units of hertz, 1 over seconds, and then the phase, phi, which is in units of radians. First of all, it's helpful to note that the maximum value for x of t is given by a, and that happens when the argument of the cosine is 0 or some multiple of 2 pi. Similarly, the minimum value for x of t is minus a, and that occurs when the argument of the cosine is some odd multiple of pi. So when do these maxima and minima occur? Well, x of t is equal to a when the argument 2 pi f t plus phi is equal to 0, and that would be at a time t equals negative phi divided by 2 pi f. So we can put a point there at the maximum at time negative phi divided by 2 pi f. Similarly, we can find one of the minima by solving for x of t being minus a, and that implies that the argument of the cosine, 2 pi f t plus phi, is equal to pi. Or t, then, has to be equal to pi minus phi quantity divided by 2 pi f. And so I've marked that on my graph, and at that point, we're going to assign minus a to the value. And then to get a third reference point, x of t is 0 when the argument of the cosine is pi over 2 we can set 2 pi f t plus phi to be equal to pi over 2, and that happens when t is equal to pi over 2 minus phi quantity divided by 2 pi f. So I've indicated that the value is 0 at that point in time. And then we also know that sinusoids repeat. So x of t repeats f times per second, or we get 1 cycle of the sinusoid every capital T equals 1 over f seconds. We're going to call t the duration of one cycle of the sinusoid. That's the fundamental period. Of course, t is also twice the distance from the maxima to the minima. So knowing t, I can fill in additional points on the graph and connect the dots, so to speak, in a sinusoidal fashion. So let's take an example here where x of t is 4 times cosine of 2 pi times 2t minus 2 pi over 3. So if we identify our parameters, we have the amplitude a is 4. We have the phase phi is negative 2 pi over 3, and that's in units of radians. And then the frequency f is 2 hertz. So since the frequency is 2 hertz, that means there's two cycles in one second. So that means there's one cycle every half second. So the fundamental period is t equals one half. Using the information I have here, I can start to sketch the sinusoid. I know that the maximum amplitude is 4, and that maximum occurs when the argument of the cosine is 0. In other words, when t is equal to negative phi divided by 2 pi f, Putting in the numbers, in this case, I have when t is equal to 1 sixth. So I have a maximum at 1 sixth. I know that I have a minimum when the argument of the cosine up here is pi. That happens at t equals 5 twelfth, and that corresponds to the period of the fundamental period because from a maximum to a minimum, I've got one half of a cycle. Or, in this case, that should be one quarter of a second. And if you subtract these two numbers, you'll see that indeed it is one quarter of a second. And then we, of course, know that our zero crossing is going to happen halfway between the maximum and the minimum. Since this sinusoid repeats every one half second, I know that 
there's a maximum every one half second. There's also a minimum every one half second. There's a zero crossing every one quarter second. And that's enough information to allow me to sketch the sinusoid. So what we just did is we were given A, F, and phi, and we sketched the sinusoid. Now, the other problem is to be able to identify A, F, and phi given a graph of a sinusoid. So here's a sinusoid that I've graphed, and I want to know from this graph what A, F, and phi are. So we'll start by first finding A. And that's easy to do because we know that A is the maximum amplitude of the sinusoid. So I look over on the vertical axis, find the amplitude corresponding to the maximum, and that's my value A. The next step is to determine the duration of one period of the sinusoid. Now there are different ways to do that. I could look from maximum to maximum. I could look from zero crossing to the second zero crossing after that. And that's a little easier sometimes because the point at which it crosses zero has a steeper slope and you can get a little more precision in your estimate of when that occurs. So I'm just going to draw that here. So we'll call that capital T. That's our period. It's the duration of one cycle of the sinusoid. So given the fundamental period, we can identify the frequency of the sinusoid f as the inverse of the fundamental period. So now I have the amplitude a, the frequency f, and it remains to find the phase phi. Well, one way to do that is to find the time of the maximum near t equals zero. So if I look at my sinusoid, I see that I have a maximum at this point, and I'm going to call that time t zero. Now I know that this maximum occurs when the argument of the cosine is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on. And since I've chosen the maximum closest to t equals 0, that's going to happen when the argument is 0. And solving for t0, I see that t0 has to be equal to negative phi divided by 2 pi f. Now we found f in the previous step, so we can substitute that in and obtain the phase given t0 as negative 2 pi f t0. So by looking at the graph, we find the maximum value for the amplitude. That gives us a, the amplitude of the sinusoid. We can find the length of or duration of one period. That gives us the frequency of the sinusoid as the inverse of that fundamental period. And then from the time of a maximum near t equals 0, we can find the phase of the sinusoid. And it turns out that we can interpret the phase shift of the sinusoid as a time shift of the sinusoid. So here I've sketched a sinusoid x of t that has a maximum at zero. It's just a cosine with zero phase. And I'm going to shift that sinusoid in time. And so I'm going to define a new sinusoid y of t as cosine 2 pi f times the quantity t minus t0. And that means I'm looking at x evaluated at t minus t0. Now this shifting of the time axis by t0 is equivalent to taking my waveform that I had, x of t, and sliding it to the right by t0 seconds. So my maximum that was at 0 in x of t now appears at t0 in y of t. And you can verify that by observing that y evaluated at t0 is the same. So plug in t0 here for t, and that's going to put a t0 here, and so I get x at 0. What was at 0 in x of t, when I do this time shift, it then shows up at t0 in x of t minus t0. So I can think about this as shifting my original x of t by t naught seconds to the right. Or equivalently, I could think about it as holding x of t fixed and taking my time axis and shifting it t naught seconds to the left. So you can think about this in whatever way makes the most sense to you. You can think about when I 
have a time shift t minus t0 is I'm taking this, the signal and I'm moving it t0 seconds to the right, or you can think about it as taking the time axis and moving it t0 seconds to the left. So this time shift is equivalent to a phase shift. Because if I just do some algebra on the argument of the cosine by distributing 2 pi f over this parentheses here, we can rewrite this as cosine of 2 pi f t minus 2 pi f t naught. And our original formula for our sinusoid with a phase shift phi was cosine 2 pi f t plus phi. So we can see that this negative 2 pi f t naught plays a role of phi. And if we check the units here, we have phi, which is in units of radians, is equal to negative 2 pi, and that's radians because there's 2 pi radians in one cycle. And then I have f, which is frequency in units of cycles per second, or 1 over second, times t naught, which is in units of seconds. And we end up with the seconds cancel, and we're left with units of radians on both sides. So the phase shift of a sinusoid is proportional to the frequency of the sinusoid for a given time shift, or it's proportional to the time shift if the frequency is held fixed. And that's something that will show up later when we talk about. Now while we're talking about phase of sinusoids, we need to introduce the notion of the principal value because phase is not unique. If I take cosine of theta, that's identical to cosine of theta plus any integer multiple of 2 pi. So phase is not a unique quantity, and oftentimes we need a unique quantity. So we're going to accomplish that by restricting the phase to an interval where it is unique. And that gives us the notion of what's called the principal value for the phase. And we're going to define principal value of the phase to be the value of the phase that lies between minus pi and pi. And so if you have a problem that you're working, you get an answer for a phase, and you're asked to provide the principal value of the phase, what you do is you add or subtract multiples of 2 pi as needed to obtain a value for the phase that lies in this interval between minus pi and pi. 